All right. Okay, so, um, yeah, the animation is complete. And I figure what I'll do is I'll just do a walkthrough of all the little steps that were intermediate, all the, in, in, all the little in-between steps. So what I had is this. This is my guide layer. And um, I've had two guide layers. You'll see there's the one all the way up there. And ooh, let me turn off. Or let me just set these up as my guide layers. And then let's refresh that and turn off all the default layers. There we are. So now we're only seeing the guide layers. So yeah, this is pretty much just a, I, I guess you could call this the blob mass map. And I've colored them in alternating colors so it's easier to track the motion of them. And the purpose of this blob mass map is there to, um, it, it's like, well, it's kind of like rotoscoping. When you rotoscope, you would trace animation. You would trace, not animation, sorry, you tra trace live action footage of the person moving and acting. And, and in this case, the blob map is serving the purpose of that footage so that when I create the final artwork, I can match move it to this blob mass map. So the whole purpose of it is to get this lifelike and very, um, try to get a, a simulation, like a physical simulation, a relatively accurate physical and physical, or I, sh I shouldn't say accurate, I say a convincing physical simulation. That's your goal in all of this. So I would, and, and when I do these masses, I would do one mass at a time. I would just go over the whole range of frames using just the head. And then I would do the um, the head and the butt, and you saw those in the previous uh, videos. And later I uh, put in the shoulder and all these other things. And there was some time spent to refine all of that to get a convincing, I won't say realistic, but I'll say a convincing motion. Convincing. Uh, so okay. So now that we've got that, um, right? Let's uh, turn on all the other layers, and I'll just turn them all off, and we'll just. I'll turn them on in the order in which I did them. So you're seeing like a full on breakdown. Oh, this one's also one of the guide layers. So I can turn that off for now. And uh, actually let me turn on my, uh, turn on this layer and let me turn on the guide map. There we are. And I guess this is also another guide layer, but we can turn that off as well. So in this case, this is just the legs only and a butt. And you'll see that um, things don't 100% match up, right? Remember, I said that it's, this is just, this mass mapping is just a, it's just guide. It's just a guide. And so when I'm going frame by frame, let me turn that down, right? This is kept pretty dim. It's just there so I can match up. But in the end, I still had to do a lot of reshaping to get that leg look, you know, shapely, get the shape, make it so that each frame looks, looks aesthetically pleasing. Um, so yeah, I'm, there are some parts where I realized, oh, you know, like the leg is too long or too short. And so I, I had to go in there and fix that up. And in the process of doing so, yeah, it's going to straight off it, of its guides, but um, the parts that stayed really the same were real, well, that dead ass, dead ass pretty much stayed pretty much the same. Um, and you can see like, there's little things that I, 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 I keep track of. Like if we look at the foot here, um, on the first few frames, right, I can, I have this rocking forward on the foot and you can also see how like, there's a bit of like kind of crunching down going on here. And then when there's the push off, you know, I just flatten that foot out and then have that now one thing i can say that has really helped me to be able to do this sort of frame by frame work is studying um high speed photography high speed and like if you i don't know go to like one of those youtube channels like uh, the slow-mo guys right and you watch high speed footage you get a you get an idea of how things move because when you're going frame by frame and you're you're flipping back and forth between these you know between multiple frames you have to think of it as if well 
when you're drawing, it's essentially frozen in time. So when you're flipping back and forth between just two or three frames, you have to downshift your sense of time to the point where you're essentially working in slow motion. And that takes, well, a lot of time and experience, but animation requires a lot of your time and will give you a lot of experience when you do it. But I have, you have to, you have to essentially think in slow motion uh, as you're drawing it and, and you tr and I'm drawing all these little subtle things going on like the foot the foot kind of crunching a bit of a sliding forward right so when she lands right it's like she just loses a little bit of traction and the thing is that right here we can see that the the pressure hasn't maximized until we crunch down completely and then we scooch it forward a little bit and then rock back and there's the final then it equalizes out you'll also see how things like as you apply pressure to the knee and when that ankle goes down right it's like you can see how the knee actually bumps up a little bit and wobbles forward and wobbles back so it's this pretty you know there's this little bibble wobble in there and it's it's like it's just it it comes out right like that kind of subtlety that subtle action will come out of it so anyway um, you know, that is, this is the most important and most important key part of it. Dead ass is totally the most important, uh, part of this whole thing. And then after that came the head and the shoulder, which are, it looks, looks like a head on head. looks like a freaking ping pong paddle. And then after that came, uh, let's see. That's the other thing is when you're, when you're animating, uh, it's not going to look very nice, right? It's, you're going to be essentially seeing like a doll. It's like looking at looking at a puppet or a doll that is uh, unclothed, and it feels kind of strange that you know you're you're working piecemeal in in terms of working through an entire pass and tracking the motion of just one pass. And this is filling in the torso, and of course there's little things like uh, the squash and stretch of the body and the the booby. You know, like there's the, the the boob physics right there, the highly triggering boob physics, and you know, all that stuff just kind of has to kind of match together, and then after that was uh was the arm so let me just find that arm layer it's uh it, here it is yeah so the well it's it's the arms which are kind of being held together and she's jumping like a jiangxi and there, there's like the floppy fabric and that follows that that follow follows my guide right you can see that how my guide is going up there there's you let me just bring up the opacity of the guide layer All right so you can see that it is just a guide. It's not rails. So you can see all the, the discrepancies in positional movement. And those things will all iron out over time. One And so, yeah, then I put in all the floppiness of the fabric. And one, one thing I do is um, if I were to show you the light table view of the fabric. So on each frame, you can see, right, like how it's. The, the red frame is where it's going to be. The blue frame is where it's coming from. So the thing is that you have to have that trailing motion. You got to make so the fabric is going to lag behind. It's a lot of work. Like, like I, I, I'm not kidding you. This stuff takes hours, many hours to do it. And then, then, then the clothing. Yeah. So she's going to look like a baldy. <laughs> like a bit of a friar tuck look and then the hat and the thing about the hat is the hat is actually done in several pieces so first there's the band so the band is tracked to her head I, i'm just manually match moving i've match moved it to her head which forms the foundation of the hat and then after that um i add in the other floppy bits and i do it in two passes so there's the conical part of the hat as well as the brim of the hat and again there's that trailing motion you can see that it's a it's you know it's a piece of fabric that just kind of has to catch up and same thing with the hair the hair follows a lot of that that trailing motion again you can actually see a few areas there's there's some flaws here uh, i can see right here that the hair is actually moving up um beyond the hat so i'm gonna have to actually go back in there and i'm gonna have to make so that the hair instead squishes under the hat and then goes up and around and i'll have to recrop the image so that that hair can go up and around so i'll have to correct those few frames it's like maybe let's see how many frames one two three you know maybe 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 two to three frames yeah i'll probably even have to correct like this other frame just to kind of make it flop over properly but when you play it, you don't even notice the problem but 
you know me, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. Um, okay. And then so after that, there's the little, little floppy bow. So again, that is another two passes, one for each side of the bow. So I'll just flip through it. We'll go frame by frame. So you, I, I handle each side of the bow individually. It's just because I, I just can't do more than one, one thing at a time. And then finally, um, there, then, then her skirt. And that's the last bit. And then we turn off all the guide layers, and that's the finished result.